The Last of Us Part 1 has got a PS5 remake, which is now making its way to PC at the end of March. Now it's looking like it comes with all of those features and then some. It's got the photo mode built in, but we're getting PC specific features like ultra wide support. They did confirm that even goes out to 32 by nine ultra wide support. Uh, the 3D audio, the haptic feedback from the uh, PS5 controllers if you're connect connected with a wire. Uh, also, we have confirmed AMD FSR 2.2 support, that is the latest version of AMD's upscaling technology, which does have some, some benefits over the original version, some better disocclusion, a less, little bit less fizzling, things like that, as well as NVIDIA's DLSS super resolution support if you're on one of the uh, RTX GPUs. Uh, I have not seen any word that there would be frame generation enabled in this game, um, so you know maybe they'll surprise us, but I have not seen that listed. No, in addition to all of these um, good, uh, you know, PC spe specific uh, supports, we do have an excellent PC system requirements chart. Now let's look at it, uh, kind of big picture. If anything jumps out as uh, unusual here, and then get it into the nitty gritty details, help you decide where your GPU falls in comparison. Uh, one thing I'll notice is that at the minimum requirements, um, they do list 16 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the GPUs are actually not very demanding. So uh, some old systems that might meet the other requirements may not have been built with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then it does jump up to 32 gigabytes of RAM at the highest end. So there's that, right? Um, and Again, is it really gonna need 32 gigabytes of RAM? This could have just been what was in their test systems, but I did wanna point out those RAM requirements uh, that did make it onto the list. Now on the CPU side of things, let's get that out of the way really quick. Uh, the minimum listed CPU is not that demanding. It's an i7-4770K, which is a four core eight thread CPU from June of 2013. So an old four core eight thread uh, i7 from 2013, not asking too much. From the AMD side of things, they listed a Ryzen 5 1500X, which is a four core eight thread CPU uh, from 2017. So newer than the Intel chip, but these were back in generations where Intel generally had a gaming performance lead, faster single threading. So a newer AMD competitor reached roughly the same uh, performance levels does make sense. Now, when I, I will point out though, that that's targeting 30 FPS. When they jump up to 60 FPS, they do recommend higher end CPUs. Uh, from the Intel side of things, they were pointing to an Intel Core i7-8700, which is an eight core, uh, sorry, six core, 12 thread CPU from 2018. So that is a big jump there uh, from those minimums to hit, just get in the game with a 30 FPS experience. And the uh, AMD recommendation jumps to a Ryzen 5 3600X with six cores and 12 threads from 2019. Now keep in mind when they give frame rate targets like 30 and 60 on system requirements lists, those don't usually mean you will get exactly 30 FPS or you will get exactly 60 FPS. Uh, usually 30 FPS means you're not gonna be getting a 60 FPS average, so they're not gonna call it 60, right? It also doesn't mean the game is locked to those frame rates. It just means they're giving you a rough idea of where your performance will be and 30 FPS, it sounds like to hit 60 FPS minimums more of the time, you're gonna need at least this level of CPU. Now the CPUs continue to jump up from there, but I will mention that usually your CPU uh, won't need to get more powerful as the resolution increases. The resolution doesn't really scale on the CPU. That's something that gets harder for the GPU to do. Some graphics settings increases do increase CPU demand, although the most demanding in graphical increase for the CPU is usually ray tracing, and to my knowledge, I didn't see anything suggesting there's ray tracing support in this game. Uh, so I'm gonna say that these might be jumping up to faster CPUs for you know better 1% lows, things like that. But I would say that you know if you can get 60 FPS on these, then you probably don't really need to jump up to those to stay at 60 FPS, unless you were trying to target a higher frame rate. Like, but anyway, we'll see where that goes. Let's jump into the meat of the video, which is gonna be looking at the GPUs. So let's dive in here to some more specifics. The minimums for again, 720p 30, at the low preset are the uh, RX 470, RX 6500 XT, GTX 970, and the 1050 Ti. All of these listed as four gigabyte versions. Now, to my knowledge, I believe the 1050 Ti did have a four gigabyte version, but also had a two gigabyte version 
if I'm remembering correctly. Also, the 970 is really 3.5 gigabytes because it couldn't use, anyway, whatever. I had a 970. Wasn't there like a class action lawsuit or something about that? Anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, RX 470 and 6500 XT. Now, if we jump over to the tech power up uh, relative performance chart, which I like quite a bit to get a rough ballpark figure of where your performance is, uh, keep in mind that this is not perfect, especially game to game. There's a lot of variance in how GPUs perform game to game. Also, the older this data is, the less accurate it can be in newer titles. So keep that in mind. But this does give you a rough idea of where your GPU will fall in comparison to these. We can also get an idea if anything looks weird, like if two GPUs are recommended at just completely different performance tiers, that kind of a thing. If we look at the RX 470, then uh, and then the 970, those are in a fairly similar performance tier. Tech power up chart showing a 10% difference, but like I said, game to game differences and newer games on older hardware, sometimes these variances, you know, not gonna be particularly meaningful. And when they say that they're recommending these for 30 FPS, 720p, they're not saying they're gonna get, they're both averaging exactly 30. They're saying that's gonna be a rough ballpark. You're gonna probably be over 30 FPS most of the time if you just turn everything down, right? But not getting 60 FPS. Um, the thing is though, if we scroll back to the 1050 Ti, <laughs> the 1050 Ti is significantly worse. Although this 1050 Ti in this chart might've been the two gigabyte version rather than the four gigabyte version. Maybe that's throwing uh, the results off a bit here, or maybe, you know, there's just a widespread of what they're recommending here. Um, so I, I will point out that that one was, was a bit lower than what we're seeing from the other recommendations they made here. Cause the 470, the 970, and then the 6500 XT is actually about 25% faster than that 470 in this chart. Like I said, again, variance and all that. So anyway, if you, sp if you're running something like a GTX 1060, that falls to the, towards the upper end of this low end spec, meaning you might be struggling on your 1060 here if this is to be believed, um, but you never know. And maybe with, again, some upscaling, FSR 2.2, that kind of thing going on, maybe you could hit better frame rates. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. So again, a lot of people uh, might be in this range if you're on a bit of an aging PC. The 1650 Super is also kind of not too far off of that 6500 XT uh, kind of ballpark that we're seeing here. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump up a performance tier, ah, get myself out of the way. And so now let's look at the recommended 60 FPS 1080p high preset. Once again, 60 FPS should probably be read as like a rough ballpark, not a like you'll get 60 FPS minimums or be locked at exactly 60. But anyway, we're jumping up here to the RX 5700 XT, the 6600 XT, the 2070 Super and the RTX 3060. It's listing all of these as eight gigabyte. Now, one option here is it might be specifying that you need eight gigabytes of VRAM to run the high preset at 1080p or it could be indicating which version of the card. For example, the RTX 3060 normally has 12 gigabytes, but Nvidia quietly snuck in a eight gigabyte version of the 3060, which not only has less VRAM, but also has a smaller memory bus, so it performs worse. So maybe it's specifying that. Um, I'm probably gonna take it to being that they recommend that based on whatever you know textures and graphics settings they're using at the high preset, you probably want at least eight gigabytes on your graphics card. That's how I'm gonna read that, but you know, uh, open to your interpretation there as well. Now, if we wanna see how much more powerful these are than the minimums they were recommending, let's scroll up in the, in the chart a little bit and maybe you'll see your GPU along the way. I'll also link this in, in the video description. I think it's helpful to figure out about roughly where, where you fall, right? So we're scrolling up through you know things like the 1660, 980 Ti, 1070, 1660 Ti, 3050, 1070 Ti, all of those. Keep on scrolling. Finally, we get to an RTX 3060. Uh, it's listed at 226% of the performance of an RX 470, which was one of our 720p low 30 FPS GPUs, one of the ones kind of in the middle there, which means that this is suggesting you need to double, oh, more than double the performance, which makes perfect sense because you're going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, and you're going from 720p to 1080p, and you're going from low presets to high presets. 
So I think it makes absolute sense to suggest more than doubling the performance of those GPUs to get to these settings and, and performance levels. Makes perfect sense to me. Now, if we wanna zero in a little bit more closely on these GPUs, if we set that 3060 as the baseline, now to be clear, this 3060 is the 12 gigabyte 3060, the eight gigabyte would fall a little bit lower than this due to the, uh, the weaker memory bus. Um, but basically I'll say, if you have something like an RX 6600 non-XT or a 5700 non-XT or a GTX 1080, um, you're fairly close to the performance here. Uh, you might wanna tweak the settings a little bit, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, something like the RTX 2060 is also fairly close here, but it is weaker than a 3060. Um, and also has six gigabytes of VRAM, unless you got one of the weird newer, they launched a 12 gigabyte one at some point during the crypto craze. Anyway, um, but, but yeah, if, they're, if they actually do need that eight gigabytes of VRAM like they were listing there, that could cause a problem, but maybe you tweak settings a little bit, use upscaling, something like that to rein in the VRAM requirements. Now, the GPUs they're listing here are all much tighter together than we saw at the low end. The 3060 um, and the, uh, uh, up to the 6600 XT is a 12% uh, performance gap with the 2070 Super falling in there as well. Um, and then uh, I already spaced out 5700 XT kind of closer there. So we're seeing uh, a fairly tight spread here. You will notice that the ARC A750 and A770 also fall into this window. Um, however, you know, I'll mention on the Intel GPUs, the performance can vary wildly game by game. Uh, so sometimes these are much stronger than the, than what's listed here, and sometimes they are uh, much weaker depending on the, the software support uh, and, and all of that. But usually newer games have been optimized fairly well, and it's the older games where you struggle a bit more there. Um, now, if you're a bit stronger than this, maybe you can jump up to the ultra preset, maybe you can uh, stay at the high preset and jump up to 1440p, or maybe you could run at a higher frame rate. Either way, what they're recommending to, uh, to jump from 1080p to 1440p, but remain at the high preset, is jumping up to an RX 6750XT or an RTX 2080 Ti. If we take our RTX 3060 baseline and we scroll up, you can start to find those other GPUs in between here, but there's not a lot, right? We pretty much uh, scroll right up past, you know, your 60, 6, 6650 XT, that kind of a thing. Uh, 2080 Super, 3060 Ti, 6700 XT. Now here's our 2080 Ti and our 6750 XT, meaning, um, there's not a lot kind of hidden in between here, right? Uh, so if you're in one of these in-betweens, you're probably, you know, tweaking settings a little bit more, that kind of thing to hit that 1440p high 60 FPS, maybe resolution scaling a little bit. Anyway, the 6750 XT and the 2080 Ti are very close in performance uh, in general. Uh, so that recommendation seems to make pretty good sense. And then let's go ahead and jump up to the next. Now, I will again mention that, that this is where we hit that 32 gigabyte of RAM recommendation jumping up to 1440p. Like I said, that may or may not actually be required. Sometimes, I think where the system requirements list sometimes come from is a game studio will have a number of test systems built at the low end, medium, and high. Uh, and they might just have 32 gigabytes of RAM in their high end systems and maybe they didn't also test it at 16 gigabytes on these higher end systems, right? That might have just, this might just be reflecting what was in the system that they were testing. But again, I will point out that 32 gigabyte of RAM at this point. Now, if you wanna jump up from 1440p high preset 60 FPS to 4K ultra preset, so we're increasing the resolution and the settings, it's now recommending, again, faster CPU, which I'm not sure is gonna be necessary, but uh, who knows what's going on with these ultra presets. Um, but we're jumping up to the 7900 XTX or the RTX 4080. So big jump here. And um, if we wanna look at how big of a jump that is, if you set the 6750 XT as the baseline here, and now we scroll down to the 7900 XTX and the RTX 4080, we're talking about double the performance, maybe a little bit more. But again, the resolution jump from 1440p to 4K is extreme. It is a lot more pixels and we're jumping uh, from the high preset to the ultra preset. And I couldn't tell you exactly how much more demanding that will be, 
but uh, taken together, uh, they're recommending doubling the performance. So these other high-end GPUs would fall somewhere in between, which means that you could either get higher settings or frame rates or both at 1440p if you have something in here, or if you're playing at 4K, it means that you'd probably have to turn down from ultra or use resolution scaling. Like we said, FSR 2.2 and DLSS are available in this game. And the 4080 and 7900 XTX are fairly, uh, fairly close competitors. It can vary game by game with some of them having some standout performances. But in general, the 7900 XTX is only slightly faster. Uh, at rasterized performance and is slower at ray trace performance, but like I said, there's no indication that ray tracing is involved in these recommendations here. So there it is. What do you guys think about all that? Um, uh, I'm looking forward to playing the game. I've always kind of wanted to play The Last of Us, but I've always played on PC for the most part. Um, and so now that it's finally making its way to PC, I can take a look. Uh, is this one you guys are interested in me benchmarking on the channel if I have time when it comes out? And by the way, launch date is the 28th of March. Um, I hope all of you have an excellent day.